Hey guys, welcome to the Tom Reefer Studio. Once again, here's the 20 gallon mixed reef. And up here we have the 3.5 gallon Pico. And over here, the six gallon tall. And over to the right here, we have the newly built 10 gallon peninsula. And today we're gonna to talk a little bit about each one of the tanks. There's things going on in each one, guys. Some positive, some negative. And we're gonna discuss that along with answer the questions on Water Change Wednesday. And it's all gonna happen right here. All right, guys, how's it going? New viewers, this is the Tom Reefer channel. Today is Water Change Wednesday. What Water Change Wednesday is, you ask me a question out below the video in the comments section, I'll answer it there, and then I answer it here. You can ask me any question you want, anything. I have some good questions today, and also I thought what we would do is in between the questions, I wanted to show you what's going on in each one of my tanks. Some positive, some negative, but always in mind that it could be helpful for you. We're gonna talk about coral bleaching. We're gonna talk about calerpa algae. We're going to talk about growth in my 20 gallon. All that stuff in between the questions. So let's get into Water Change Wednesday. Christopher asks what I put in my middle compartment in the refugium on my water box 20 to keep the chato from drifting into the return pump area and clogging the pump. And I have some what's called egg crate. It's like the stuff they put on uh, fluorescent lights, usually in an industrial area. And that holds the chato back. And another thing is that if you look inside on your water box 20, the fins, if you want to call them, that separate the compartments and also allow the water to continue through are on the bottom. And they only allow maybe an inch, maybe less of water to pass through and into the next compartment. So really all you have to do is cover that lower section where the water passes through. Steve actually inspired me to talk a little bit about Old Man Reefer. He asked a question about food and feeding, and I told him I have a video and go check it out. I show you what food I feed my corals and fish. And then he asked a follow-up question, and he said, what food or additive turned you from Old Man Reefer to the powertrain Tom Reefer. When I first started the channel about a year ago now, a little more than a year, December 2019, I didn't really have a voice. I didn't know what I should do and I had a lot of insecurities like, am I too old for YouTube? You know, all these things are going through my mind. So I thought, okay, well, if I call myself Old Man Reefer, my thought was I'm not trying to be somebody I'm not. But in all the years of my education, I taught middle school art and I acted somewhat like a middle school. If you look at some of my early videos, I was so stiff and I thought I should be Old Man Reefer. So anyway, that's the story behind Old Man Reefer. It went from Old Man Reefer to Tom Reefer. What you see now is what I am if you saw me on the street. All right, so that's the Old Man Reefer story. All right, let's get into the next question. I noticed, guys, I just noticed I'm crooked here, but I'm not redoing those questions. See? There you go. I'm picky, but you probably didn't even notice. Corey asks, he's had a successful reef set up for nine months now, and he's been growing corals, and everything's healthy, and virtually no algae, he says. Uh, but he's getting used to the... <laughs> he's getting used to some of the corals, 
and he'd like to remove some and replace them with others. And in particular, he's got a zinnia that he wants to take out, and he also wants to take out some paleothoas. My response to him was this, and I think we've all experienced it, guys. I should probably change that. All right. I think we've probably all experienced it. I call it the itch. When you first start a reef tank, and you're, it's going well, and you're enjoying it, and you're watching it, and things are growing, one of the first things that happens is you begin to want to go up in size. You want more of what you're enjoying. First, let me answer his question. Zinnias are really difficult to remove from the rocks. Sometimes you get lucky with those forceps that I have, the long ones. You can reach down very close to the bottom of the stalk of the zinnia and pull and sometimes it'll tear it right off the rock right down to the rock other times it leaves stuff behind and they will regrow you can also cut them off with the scissors and this is what I told him real low but those will grow back as far as zinnia unless you can remove the whole rock and I think that's what he was inquiring about if you can take the fragment of rock off that the coral's on, then you can just remove the whole coral. Leathers, you can actually peel off. And even if some of the leather gets left, it could be six months to a year or more before they really grow back. Or you can even cut a leather and it'll heal and it'll regrow, but it takes a really long time. Paleos, I told him, they excrete a toxin. So unless you can remove them from the rock, I wouldn't mess with trying to pull them off individually. I would try to remove them with the rock they're on. My paleos were on a plug that I glued to a tonga rock. And if I needed to remove them, they've now overgrown onto the tonga. I would have to remove the yellow leather that I have on there. I'd have to remove them. There's a lot of stuff growing on there. It's best to get them early on before they really start to grow in. And I would think nine months he has some ability to take some of the ones that he had in there out. Now let me give you my take on this, guys, about the itch to go up in size. Most of us are nano reefers for various reasons. But a lot of times we're reefers that are just starting and we're starting small and over time, we start to get that itch to go larger. And what I found, being that I started small and I went large, I can look back on it. And when you're looking at something as beautiful as our reef tanks are, and you're really having decent success with it, and you love it, you like it, you know, you're looking at it, you're enjoying it, you think by putting more and going larger and seeing more that you're going to enjoy it more almost a little bit of an addiction. If you can focus yourself on the beauty that you have in the small box, this little window, it's not gonna make any difference. I had gone up to 250 gallons, and what happens is you're kind of looking at sections of the tank anyway. It's hard to take it all in, you can, but usually what do you do? You walk up close to a tank and you zero in on a specific section. So what I would recommend is really try to perfect your nano reef and realize that by going larger, it's not going to make you much happier. It will for a little bit and then it kind of dies off. I went through the pecking order. I went from 10 to 20 to 55 and then 250 and then I came back down. I've been having great success and great enjoyment with these small ones. Over in the 20, what I have going here is an explosion of growth. I've really noticed it over the last three weeks. Before we go any further, guys, what the heck is this thing? It's some kind of a worm, a spaghetti worm or polycleat, as they might say. I have no clue what this is unless I look it up. So maybe some of you guys can tell me what you think that is. Look at that thing. So this is what I was telling you about before. See, there's the cut I made. 
and if you can look at this it's really sprouting this is where I broke it off on the digitata and that's healing and it's going to hopefully grow right up through there you can see there's some growing behind it so I may have to cut this again and the digitata is really growing cool if you could see this in the beginning maybe I'll put one up here it's really spreading out now and so is the style of four. It's got nice color and it's really growing nicely. And the color in these, this is taking on a greenish color. It's very cool, this Acro with purple tips. My green star polyp is just almost electric green. And this isn't the lighting. This is my natural light. It's a little bright. The yellow leather always brightens it up. I always have to tone down the camera to photograph that. Look what you can do here. If I put my finger here and drag, oops, I swear it dragged the whole setting over and brought the new one up. I must be going nuts. I thought I saw this whole thing slide when I did this, but now it's just moving that thing. I thought the whole thing slid over. A couple people asked how to contact Fish Guy Mike. I assume they're from the Jersey area. So what I'll do, and I forgot to do it, I'll put his phone number out in the description under last Sunday's video. I also got something going in the six gallon, guys. What's happened is I think when I increased my intensity of the light, which is the Kessel A80, it started to bleach my Pasolapora. You know, there's nothing wrong with my camera. They've just bleached out. And if you look down here, here's the same ones. They're greener on the bottom. Now this is the color they're supposed to be. They're greenish and they have a little bit of brown in them up here. You the reason for me raising the light was if you recall, those of you who've been following me, I was having difficulty with my Kenya tree. It was all closed up for months. It was literally a few months, and I thought it was the light, and I don't think it was. I think it was a large transition when I moved the tank from one side of the room to the other. I did large water changes that left it exposed, and I don't think it got a chance to ever really recover. Here's a close-up of the Calerpa. They are really cool looking. And I misspoke a little bit last week. I said asexual instead of sexual. Asexual is what they're doing now. They're starting to replicate. That's asexual. Sexual is they'll actually release spores and create that way. They're single-celled. What happens is during that time, what I said is they die off, so you gotta be careful, and they release gametes, and what's basically happening is they'll foul your tank if you don't remove them. So if I see it to go sexual and dying off, I'll just pull stuff out. Right, guys that should do it for this one I think I have a couple surprises for Sunday all right let me show you I think that's enough that's enough of me blah blah take care now guys see you on Sunday take care